step further, further with his question. Class, you remember uh, early on, maybe the first time we met, I threw out the little uh, Bobot boards, the breadboard, and we looked at LEDs and we worked on programming uh, uh, an embedded micro uh, uh, computer to uh, controller to turn on and off LEDs. Those LEDs, uh, I may have actually shown you an infrared LED uh, because they're commonly available. And I, so my question is, it, to you, Bonham, is it is likely that they have seen one. Certainly it was in my little bag of goodies when we first mm -hmm. met. Mm -hmm. uh, are, are the LEDs that you use those simple, cheap LEDs that are so commonly available, or are they supercharged? They are a program of our LEDs, and they answer to meet less of the exact frequencies as we want. Because there are two frequencies. We did not put this because it's too technical, maybe. Uh, but uh, if you go to our website uh, for the functional near infrared, which is, again, element directly into your slash F near, F-N-I-R, uh, then you will be able to see several presentations and they will see that we had to choose two waveforms to be able to do the mathematics to resolve the information, the oxyhemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin signal. So, uh, no, they are not so... Uh, uh, All right, now let me uh, pick up on that. We have one student uh, whom I'm looking at right now, at whom I'm looking in case there's an English professor in the room. Uh, and he's a math major. Uh, how much are you, you collect uh, signal from your receiver, if you will, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I'm assuming you store that in the computer in some way. Exactly. What kind of massaging or mathematical processing, very briefly, do you have to do to that signal? A lot. Uh, that's why actually the key members of our team are biomedical signal processing colleagues, uh, including me, that's my specialty also, and that's probably why we are ahead of all the other groups, because this is not only about physics and physiology, it's about information processing. And this is why I really much like the plan for your new engineering program, uh, where you would really have information uh, analysis, uh, signal analysis as part of the uh, of, of the, uh, the, the, uh, the curriculum. Uh, the reason why signal processing is so important, these are very faint signals. Remember, you're sending light through the skull, through the skin, through the skull, through the brain, and you're receiving what is reflected and what is scattered. So imagine the few photons that you get, and there is much noise in the environment. So how are you going to glean what is the real signal from everything else, and your body is very really actively emitting kind of a uh, source. You emit a lot of activity due to the cardiovascular activity, you see the heart rate, you see the breathing, all of those, and also there could be protrusions and uh, other noises in the environment. So you have to be finding the needle in the haystack. So the signal processing and information processing information is your key to them. All right, well, let's leave that. Ben, why don't you come up here? Uh, here comes our ace mathematician. Uh, ben, why don't you? you query her about the math that's behind this. Yes, yes. I, I don't know that I'm exactly qualified to do that. I'm just a freshman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I know a little, a little about calculus and that's it. Uh, I was actually, I have a, a different kind of question actually. <laughs> right. I do have a question. Um, when we talked to, uh, we talked to Kenneth M. Ford uh, about cognitive prosthetics, and well, when we're talking about this, the, the looking at the brain and looking at the, the thought processes, and, and uh, we see that as technology develops, uh, communications is you know just uh, rapidly changing. And yeah. looking at this, uh, you can quickly make a leap, seeing how this could uh, transform into the communications. Uh, as some of the applications for this technology. Wonderful question. Uh, are you familiar with the brain computer interface work that goes on? Uh, because this technology is very much poised 
to the reticulated of the brain and will be currently developing it for a, um, for patients who are locked in, those patients who have lost uh, their neuromuscular control, such as ALS patients, amyotrophic um, sclerosis, uh, lateral sclerosis patients. Uh, but also, we have an application which we think will benefit the video gaming industry because you will be able to, you will be able to uh, green the signals on your brain and manage the video game much better than you could do with your fingers. Uh, so there's also potential of the in gaming industry. But certainly our uh, goal is to help the patients who cannot commit to the world, especially those who are in coma or who have less neuromuscular control. Okay. That that was uh, that was part of it. Now in doing that, uh, basically and in very remedial terms, you're reading what the person is thinking using uh, your your and what we talked about, maybe mm -hmm. we can call cognitive prosthetic. Sure. Um, now, how you, we talked about how you uh, read read what you were reading, what, what uh, the, the readings that you got back. Mm -hmm. Now, is there any way to differentiate between thoughts that would be coming out? Like, if you were using the the headband and you were thinking and communicating with the device, mm -hmm. is there any way to differentiate between the thoughts aimed at the device and the controls that you're sending there and other like extraneous thoughts like things that are going on. Actually, uh, that's a very good question again. You know, wonderful questions coming from uh, from the students on their feet. Uh, obviously, maybe uh, we have to uh, appreciate that this is the baby steps of the technology currently. The two signals that we are very confident about are the attention signal, if you're paying attention, we can tell. And uh, also we can tell uh, very much if you're forming memories, especially uh, the working memories, uh, uh, spatial or whatever it could be, that we can test. But we can also test higher level functions, but we cannot, without doing the proper research, which takes a lot of time, be able to sort of uh, focus on the specific thought process. I should, however, give you uh, sort of um, a, a, a um, sort of look into the future. We have tested the technology for uh, uh, various applications, one of them being deception, and uh, we were able to see if uh, uh, the subject was not presenting the truth to us. Uh, that is one uh, sort of application potentially that could be used uh, certainly in psychiatry.